What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the OpenStreetMap add-on and how it's been updated to be able to bring in a lot of detailed city imagery using Google Maps information. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you might've seen this announcement. It's been a little while now, um, but this was an announcement from Google that they're making photorealistic 3D tiles or tiles of buildings available through their API so that you can actually download it through different plugins and extension you built. Um, this is good news because it allowed the creator of OpenStreetMap the ability to access this data directly inside of Blender. And so we've talked about the OpenStreetMap add-on for Blender before, but I wanted to kind of go through and do a refresh on this. And remember that the OpenStreetMap add-on um, gives you the ability to bring in map data and 3D cities and terrain and other things like that. Now note that there is a free version so if you just wanna download the Google 3D Cities um, and some of the OpenStreetMap data, you can use this version in order to do that. Note that there's a premium version that also gives you access to textured buildings and forests and satellite imagery in here as well. Um, so I can link to both of those in the notes down below. Note that the Google version is gonna bring in these tiles and these are just gonna be kind of like a big chunk of building geometry, while the OpenStreetMap version is actually gonna bring in buildings that are like UV um, mapped so that you can actually apply textures to them and other things like that. So um, you can take a look at both of these. I'll link to them in the notes down below. But specifically, I wanted to focus on how you can add Google 3D Cities using this particular add-on. And so um, there's a blog post, which I will link to, which really kind of walks you through everything that you're going to need to do. Now, one thing that you do need to be aware of is when you do this, you are going to need a 3D tiles key through Google. Um, when you do this, you are going to have to enter a credit card. Now, that being said, even though you need to enter your credit card information, what the Google page actually said to me is it said that your card will not be charged without you manually upgrading to a paid plan. So even though you do have to put in your credit card number, um, it says it's not going to bill you for any usage. Um, it's just going to be there for when you upgrade if you go beyond the usage limits, which honestly are pretty high. Um, so 6,000 queries per day or 300 tile set queries per day. Um, I've not gotten anywhere close to this, but I haven't used this ultra heavily. And so to enable this, you're just gonna wanna follow the links inside of the post right here. Um, basically what you need to do is enable the Maps API, um, which again, you can just kind of follow the links. You can click on the button to enable and kind of follow the instructions in order to do that. So if I click on enable, it's already done for me. Uh, but if you go into the manage button and click on the option for keys and credentials, your Maps API key is gonna show up in here. And I can't remember, I think you had to click like an add button or something like that. But once you've added it, your Maps API key will show up in here and you can click on the show button in order to bring that over into Blender. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at what this does. Okay. so. When you download this and install it, um, you're going to want to install the add-on file that comes along with this in Gumroad to make sure that it's enabled. You're also going to want to make sure that you set a directory to store your downloaded OpenStreetMap files. Um, so this is just a folder where it's going to save this stuff. You're also, if you got the premium version, um, it's gonna come with some assets that it's going to uh, link to for some of the usage and you're just going to want to tell it where that's living right here. Down below, this is where your different access tokens and API keys go, right? So like my Google 3D, um, my Google 3D tiles key is gonna go right here. And then my Mapbox access token is gonna go right here. So that's where you're going to save those. Once you're done, you're probably gonna wanna come in here and just do a save preferences so this all gets saved. But now what we have is we have a tab over here on the right hand side of the page, right? If I tap the N letter, key on my keyboard, the N key, um, that's going to pop up this little tab over here and I can click on the Blender OpenStreetMap tab to pop this up. Now, notice how what this does is this is going to give us the ability to import different things in a location, right? And so it's using latitude longitude in order to do that. Um, the best easiest way to set latitude longitude of a location is to click on the select button right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop up this page where you can zoom into a location, right? So for me, I'm gonna zoom into Denver right here. 
And let's go ahead and pick something kind of downtown. So we'll just go down here. You can click on the show selection rectangle and you can resize that rectangle and it's going to set your latitude longitude, which you can then copy into the add-on. So we're gonna pick this location right here. If I click on the button to copy, it's going to copy these different coordinates. And then if I go back into Blender, I can click on the button to paste in order to paste those coordinates. Now, if we look at this, there's multiple different kinds of information you can bring in, right? There's the open street map data, which is going to be the map data and the buildings through there. You can bring in terrain, you can bring in an image overlay, which is going to link back to one of those data sources. In this case, I might do the map box right here. Um, and there's the Google 3D tiles. So let's say that I was to click on the image overlay. And so if I click on the button for import, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in tile images of the satellite imagery from Mapbox, and it's going to create an image inside of Blender. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I think this image import is something that's actually one of the premium features. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe that it is. Um, but some of the open street map data that you can bring in, right? So if I do open street map and I do a two dimensional, for example, and I check these boxes, notice how I'm gonna be able to import those. And I think you can do all of that with the free version. So if I click on import right here, it's gonna bring in the open street map information for this location like this, right? So you can use it in order to bring in um, like roads and footprints of buildings and other things like that. Now you could like tab in here, right? And extrude them all up um, in order to create buildings with them, that kind of thing. That's available in the free version. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Google information that you can bring in, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paste this location information and we're gonna select the option for Google 3D tiles. Now notice that there are like massive differences in the level of detail that you can bring in. Um, so for example, I'm going to bring in the whole city detail from that same location that we had before. That's gonna come in really fast because it's literally just gonna come in with this mesh that's like super high level, right? You look at this, there's not a lot of detail, anything like that. Um, usually you're not going to use this. By the way, if this is all getting clipped out, you just wanna change your clipping length to something further, right? So I might change it to like 50,000 something like that. Notice how that does bring in your city, but it brings it in at a very low level, but it did it very quickly. Um, now, that being said, let's say that we were to go back in here and do the same thing, but bring our level of detail to maybe like groups of buildings and click on import. Now, that is going to take a little while longer because it's going to bring in a lot more data, but it's going to do it in a way that's much more detailed. All right, so if we take a look at what this creates, notice how this is much more detailed, right? And this has given us a big chunk of downtown Denver right here, like way more than we had selected. Now, that is one thing that is really kind of annoying about the way the Google data is used, um, is that right now the Google tiles for your city are significantly larger than the location that you select in here. So um, I did not select this entire area um, when I selected this with my map. So if we take a look at this, right, I had like a very small area selected. And if I was to bring in the open street map building data, right? So if I go to 3D realistic, click on import, bring this in. And so then if I was to toggle the Google 3D tiles, notice how this actually brings in the buildings in the area where I actually had selected them, while the Google tiles, for whatever reason, come in at a huge, like much larger area. Now, again, I think this is a Google limitation rather than an OpenStreetMap limitation. Just be aware, this is going to bring in a lot more data. And so what that means is that means that if you do the Google 3D tiles and you do it on the buildings with more details, which is the most detailed setting, you could be sitting and waiting for a long time um, for it to bring in that data. Now, that being said, if we take a look at the data that's in here, um, and this is just on kind of the medium setting, but if we look at the data that's in here, this gives us a really good indication of what the actual 3D city would look like. And um, I'm going to go ahead and open one up that I used in order to bring in the Denver at a little bit higher level of detail. So um, I think this one is the buildings with details tab. And so if you look at this, these buildings actually look really good in the background. Um, so obviously they don't have like, uh, they don't have like reflection and roughness maps and everything like that. But still from a like building detail standpoint, this actually does a really good job. Now, one thing to be aware of when we do this is if we tab into this mesh, 
notice what it's doing and what it's showing us is this is just a giant triangulated mesh, right? So what that means is that means you can't come in here and just edit out individual buildings, make changes to them, anything like that. That's one of the reasons why the open street map data is valuable because those buildings come in as kind of like separate, but definitely less detailed geometry, but you can actually edit them. You can't really edit anything in here. I mean, I guess you could kind of like play around with the mesh, right? So if we selected some vertices or something like that, you could move them, but that's not really gonna help you a whole lot when it comes to um, actually editing buildings themselves. All right, so overall, I'm pretty happy with the results that this creates. I'd recommend at least downloading the free version and giving it a try. And then if you're looking for some things like that 2D satellite import, um, as well as the OpenStreetMap data, trees and forests, things like that, you could check out the premium version. I'll link to both of those in the notes down below, but leave a comment below and let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.